It's colorless, odorless, and tasteless, and it's everywhere. Hydrogen is one of the world's most abundant elements, a plentiful source of energy, lighter and more powerful than lithium and oil. It can be used to fuel large vehicles like airplanes and ships, or to power heavy industry like mining. But the challenge is to replace conventional fossil fuels with hydrogen without using contaminating energy sources to make it. This is no ordinary forklift. It's the world's first to be run on green hydrogen, produced right here at the Las Tortolas copper plant near Chile's capital. This is very similar to a petrol station, and the time it takes to fill the vehicle is very similar as well. Green hydrogen is produced by separating hydrogen molecules from H2O, in other words water, through a process of electrolysis. It only emits water vapor, no CO2. And this is the second part of the equation, the ability to generate enough sustainable energy as they're doing here to make the production of green hydrogen really worthwhile. And that's where a country like Chile, because of its geographic conditions, has an enormous advantage. At least 50% of the cost of producing green hydrogen is renewable energy. But for Chile, that's not a problem. We have the highest solar irradiance on the planet in the Atacama Desert in the north, and the best winds on the world, of the world in the south in Magallanes, in Patagonia. So capacity factors in the, in, in the, for solar PV in the north are 37%. That compares with 25% in Saudi Arabia or in, the, or in Spain. And in the south, in Magallanes, capacity factors for wind are over 60, even 70 percent, versus 55 percent in the North Sea, for example. For the energy minister so calls green hydrogen Japan, the missing link to carbon launch, neutrality. But if this is so special, why aren't other countries already doing it? So it's not a technical issue any longer, it's a financial, economic issue. Former Environment Minister Marcelo Mena is adamant that it's up to Chile's government to produce the incentive, as it did a decade ago, to dramatically reduce the cost of solar energy. You either put a price on carbon or you subsidize the investment, but without neither of these working, you will simply not have the large-scale projects that we anticipate. In Chile's Patagonia, Porsche, Siemens and Entel Green Power have joined forces to build the world's first fully integrated facility to produce carbon neutral fuels with wind power to make hydrogen. But it's not expected to produce more than 55 million liters by 2024. To make and export green hydrogen as cheaply as conventional fuel by the year 2050, which is the government goal, will require not just small plants like this one, but gigawatt-sized facilities. In Chile, that will mean negotiating a multinational accord between the public and private sectors, costing about $50 billion. But it could be a small price to pay to transition to what may be one of the world's best options for dramatically reducing greenhouse gases and global warming, without limiting the consumption of energy. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Colina, Chile.